Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 10 points right now. Got a chart of Target up there. So you see the initial move on Target down to 242. We're down about $7 right now on Target. You had the expected move at about $11 in either direction, priced into options. So slightly under that move, we jump over to lows. Lows trading higher. Pulling back a little bit from the lofty highs of 192. You're back to 189. Jumping over to the lows numbers. Climbing up to the number. Earnings beats estimates as home professionals help drive growth is the headline there. Retailers' same-store sales dropped 1.6% in the quarter, but I believe the market was looking for about a decline of 2.2%. We'll get down to it. Yes, they were. They were looking for a decline of 2.2%. So same-store sales dropping by just 1.6%. Some lofty comps that they're dealing with, of course, here. Earnings beat 425 versus 401. Revenue beats by about 700 million it's a decimal point when you put it in billions but 27.57 billion market was looking for 26.85 billion that profit rising to over 3 billion which correlates to the 425 a share uh net sales climbing to 27.57 the number they had last year was 27.3 they beat on the expectation as well now as we mentioned same store sales dropping by just 1.6 percent same store sales fell 22 percent but grew by 32% when looking over a two-year period. Did you get that one? So low same-store sales, I'm going to repeat it again, because two-year comps are just bananas because of the growth some of these companies have had. And that is a scientific term, bananas. Uh, no, it's just remarkable when you look on a two-year basis. Sometimes some of the growth, you just don't realize it when you put those numbers in together quarter by quarter by quarter over the last year and a half during COVID. Low same-store sales dropped by 1.6% in the quarter. Same store sales fell 2.2%. Maybe that's talking about the year. Yeah, but grew 32% over a two-year period. I mean, you're talking about Lowe's. Two years ago, folks, Lowe's was doing big business, all right? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they were doing big business. And guess what? They're doing 32% bigger business, larger business than they were two years ago. Uh, during the same period a year ago, Lowe's put up big numbers, including 35.1% growth of same store sales and nearly a 69% surge in quarterly profits as the retailers really benefited from maybe it was just the um, ordering online. St stimulus was in there as well. And they talk about more business from do-it-yourself customers, but it's trying to attract some of the home professionals with a new loyalty program. 20 to 25% of the total sales have come from contractors, electricians, plumbers, and others versus about 45% at Home Depot. So there's a little breakdown there for you. Uh, let's see. So low CEO Marvin Ellison said the company's home professionals business grew by 21% in the second quarter. Home decor sales 10%. Revenue expected about $92 billion for the year. 30% uh, same store sales growth on a two-year basis as we talk about. And they got a $9 billion repurchase plan in there. So Lowe's trading higher, rightfully so. Strong numbers across the board there. We take a look at Lowe's on a three-year weekly for some context. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. You were down at 60 bucks at the lows of COVID, the lows for low. Uh, man, that was a buying opportunity in a big way. You trade from 120 down to 60 bucks. The world figures out that we're all going to spend money to redo our homes. Lows takes off to about 180. We come into 2021 at about 157. Now, just the recent run that Lowe's had since the March lows to 215, the high in May, you're right back to a 50% retracement coming into these numbers. Now, you're going to open at about 190 on lows as they are trading higher this morning. And the other one we have out this morning is TJ Maxx. They have some strong numbers as well. We're trading up about a buck 50. Now, interesting, not as much volatility priced into TJ Maxx. You jump back to Target shares, right? Target, now what's nice is the market has not opened yet, so options are have not repriced yet. So basically all prices having to do with options are still set on the Thinkorswim platform. That's going to correlate to an $11 move for Target, as we talked about. Now Lowe's, you were looking for about a $6.68 move. That would push you to about $190 on the upside. And as you see, uh, excuse me, no, that would push you to $189. Uh, excuse me, and that's basically right where we're trading at, just above 189, coming in at the expected move to the upside on lows. And then, as I said, TJ Maxx, now they're up. Now, the interesting thing here is TJ Maxx, a lot less volatility, right? $2.31, you're talking about the move on TJ Maxx, and we are up about a buck fifty on their numbers this morning as well. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. T-Mobile, we talked about this story, I believe maybe yesterday or Monday, talking about potential breach of maybe as much as 105 million customers. Looks like it's about 7.8 million the hackers stole. Um, 
post paid customers' personal data. The company was made aware of the attack last week, said in a statement, data from about 850,000 prepaid customers, more than 40 million records of former and prospective customers also stolen. These companies got to get it under control, folks, because it's never going to stop, and all our information just basically is going to be out there before we know it. Kind of already is. Uh, T Mobile down a little bit this morning. Markets down as well, though, so no real uh, dramatic moves on that stock. This one's an interesting one they were talking about in the den yesterday, Palantir. So for you gold bulls out there, I know we got plenty of gold bulls out there, um, it's a good sign. Uh, when you got public companies stowing $50 million in gold as opposed to maybe putting it into some money market or cash accounts, keeping cash on the books, no, they're going to keep gold on the books. Um, and as they mentioned, also possible that they'd invest in cryptos. The data analytics software maker has a growing cash pile thanks to stock sales, and now it's investing in growth as well as early stage customers. Um, just something to keep your eye on, folks, because we've seen what Elon has done for Bitcoin and the likes, stowing a billion plus dollars of Tesla money over there. Uh, not sure that's going to happen the same with gold, but you could see Palantir getting into the cryptos as well. And if you just start seeing some, of these public companies, folks, going after gold, just as a little bit of hedge of economic uncertainty out there, that could put a lift in gold. And right now, jumping to gold, we got gold at 1789. You take a look at gold, put it on a three-year weekly basis. We're stuck on this downtrend channel. You know, not exactly parallel lines here. Not sure that lines up super cleanly. We just traded right back down to the lows we had in March. You're talking about within almost a dollar, literally almost a dollar, that Sunday night plunge last Sunday. We make it down to that exact retest. We've bounced since then. I mean, you really want to see gold get above, whether it's the high we had in July, the high we had back in May above 1900. We're looking at all-time highs recently of 2089. Is that an all-time high? Yeah, that is all-time high. We got above those highs that we had back in 2011 before giving it up. Uh, but we'll see. Gold, looking for a little bit of a bid here. We'll see as it uh, plays out. But that is some good news for gold bugs when you got public companies spending their cash. Pub public companies got a lot of cash. And even as a hedge, it would make sense. Um, and I have some gold, folks, all right? My dad's got the gold report. I know I'm biased. But it would make sense as a hedge to not be just keeping all your money in this environment in particular, folks, when we have inflation very possible okay doesn't mean it's going to happen but it can't hurt to have a little bit of your cash maybe in there just as a hedge we have eight nine million jobs we got to make up we have markets basically sitting at all-time highs not so much anymore after yesterday's crush but something to consider and it wouldn't be um gold a lot easier to stomach maybe than crypto um in terms of a public company putting that on the books doesn't mean you can't pull back but for what it's worth uh Let's jump to this one real quick, because this one's an interesting one talking about hedging. Smart Money had the jump on another mid-month plunge in the S&P 500. So what it talks about here is traders loading up on protection. It talks about the VIX. It talks about the volatility priced into the VIX. <coughs> Excuse me. And it talks about here, option traders have kept their guard up in August, a month before, as they say, that they may start pairing some of the stimulus with the Federal Reserve. Heading into this week, Angst was particularly acute in derivatives tied to the VIX, okay? You had, in the futures market, a six-month contracts on the VIX traded at 7.7 .7 points above the cash index, a premium that hadn't, a premium that before this year hadn't been seen since 2016. We're gonna talk about this a little bit when we get back. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. 
Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days weeks or even months searching to find and right now we're offering licenses available at only 79 dollars a month we are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software get your copy of the art of timing the trade charts today by visiting tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, with the S&Ps. Negative by 12 on the open right now. Dow off about 119 points. We got the NASDAQ negative by about 25. Let's jump around to some of the stocks with their numbers, see how they're opening this morning. We got Target shares down about 2.3% on their numbers. We talked about lows. Low shares trading up by 3.9%. We referenced TJ Maxx as well. Not quite the same story on the open. Always interesting to see how they trade on the open. TJ Maxx diving lower from 70.50 to 68.70. Uh, that one going to correlate. Kind of waiting for some ticks and some prints on that stuck at 6870 on the open right now okay jumping back to that article a couple interesting points talking about basically volatility and people buying insurance in the s p so you have the vix spiked to 1960 which it references was a high of recent um a recent high made and what this gets into as well <clears throat> And let me let me pull these numbers because it's it's some lofty levels here. So heading into this week, so as we talked about, the angst was particularly acute in derivatives tied to the VIX. The VVIX on Friday reached the highest level relative to the VIX. Okay, that's the measure of implied volatility in the VIX since before the COVID-19 pandemic. In the futures market, as I said coming into the break, you had the VIX trading at seven point cents, seven points above the cash index, a premium that before this year hadn't been seen since 2016. Keeping all this in mind, we had a little bit of a sell-off yesterday as it goes. Um, now, what I find really amusing at the end of this article on Bloomberg here is that you have Michael Purvis, some advisor out there, the name sounds familiar, but I'm not familiar, heightened interest for hedging is a sign that sentiment has yet to turn overly exuberant and there are still skeptics that can be converted into buyers now i get the argument right saying that we're only at a top when nobody when everybody thinks the market's going up you know when everybody's in everybody's talking about it we've all heard the stories right everybody's talking about what you're doing everybody's in the market everybody's fully invested well we're obviously not there yet if people are buying insurance because they're spending capital that might be used for the market on insurance it's also just a reflection that there's fear priced into this market maybe rightfully so that we could see a pullback at a time when we have potential inflation. The next story I'm going to jump to, folks, is talking about food inflation worldwide, and it's going to blow your mind. So keep it in mind as we go through these, all right? We have inflation. We have 8 to 9 million jobs we've got to make up in a big way, and we have markets sitting at all-time highs. Those things don't quite square themselves. They don't. Keep that in mind when somebody tells you that anybody pointing to market participants buying insurance before sell-offs 
is indicative that we are not at a peak. Doesn't have to be that way, folks. Okay, now the food article. This one out by Bloomberg, a Bloomberg Business Week article. Great piece out here. Don't have time to go through it all, but I'm just going to cherry pick a couple of facts in here. It really breaks down uh, worldwide. I mean, in the U.S., we are the wealthiest nation out there, folks. Very fortunate to be in the United States of America. When you look at some of the families across the world, the type of costs that are rising, okay, on that basis, it's pretty staggering. Now, just tying in the first one, changes in global food prices, okay? Oils, uh, one of the biggest ones, you're talking about almost 50%. Sugars, how about 25%? Cereals on the same way, 25%. Dairy, a solid 12.2%, and meat across the board, 6.5% in a big way. That's going to hit everybody, folks. Um, now, you get down to some of the numbers when they're talking about specific countries in here. Let me see if I can get where we were. Uh, excuse me for scrolling here. Come on. Here we go. Um, yes, here we go. This is what I want to get to. So Brazil, okay? Huge player. One of the world's largest producers of agricultural commodities and ships crowd to its ports and load grains. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and ships crowd its ports. Ships crowd its ports. Okay, I'll get there. Um, you have ships that are con you know, shipping all of these products. They crowd the ports to load grains, oil seeds, coffee, and meat. Much of the cargo is bound for China, they talk about here. But how about this one, folks? Um, meanwhile, food in Brazil is getting more expensive. Beep. Beef prices in July up 43% from a year earlier. Chicken prices up more than 20%. Uh, per capita domestic consumption of beef has fallen to its lowest level since 1996. Now, this isn't quite involved in our inflationary discussion when you look at the Fed, all right? We're going to get some Fed minutes out today, I think. Uh, and that's always in the discussion. We got Jackson Hole going on later this month, late August. They're not looking at the prices that Brazilians are paying for beef, folks. But this is factoring into what's going on in America to some degree as well. Now, as I mentioned, this article really gets into the numbers worldwide. They're talking about scant rainfall, also sent prices of electricity soaring in that nation. Rising energy and food prices cause annual inflation to accelerate in almost 9% in July, complicating Brazil's effort over there for the central bank, which has raised benchmark interest rates four times in 2021. They can't get a hold of it right now as those prices are really accelerating. Uh, milk and dairy have also become dear. We used to go to the supermarket and buy a box of 12 bottles per milk. Uh, 12 bottles of milk per a month. Now I'm having tea every day. We rarely buy milk. It's really hitting people across the board, and they keep going into it in terms of worldwide where they are, um, whether you're talking about Brazil. I think they get into Nigeria in here as well. Um, staggering prices worldwide and see how that plays out. And we're dealing with some of it in the U.S. for sure as well. All right. Let's jump around to other stories we got. I am going to check back just on some of these equities and see how we're trading because I'm always curious. Target shares holding on to the lows right there. Lows. Trading a bit higher. Let's jump on Home Depot and see how they're trading. Home Depot up a little bit, maybe with Target on their numbers. Uh, excuse me, with Lowe's on their numbers. And Walmart shares pretty much unchanged so far this morning, down with the market. Let's take a look at some of the FANG stocks. Amazon down about a tenth of a percent. Microsoft shares down about a tenth of a percent as well. Apple's had quite a week for itself, putting up all-time highs. Uh, Apple down about a quarter percent right now, 149.87. Okay, jumping around, what else we got going on? I found this one interesting. So you got Molson. Okay, they have teamed up with the one and only Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Uh, that's not the article I want there. Hold on one second. Where are we? Come on. Oh, don't do this to me. All right, we're going to have to get back to it because I had it up there and I'll find it again. But it's talking about Zoa, the energy drink from Molson, teaming up with The Rock. We'll jump to the, back to that one. This was another article I had teed up here to, to talk about. Just interesting to try and wrap your head around some of these technologies that are coming at us. Now, Waymo is the self-driving unit of Google. They've been spun off, basically. It came out of Google Labs. They've been doing this for about 10 years. They're supposed to be the industry leader. Now, they have already been running um, a driverless autonomous vehicle program in phoenix and i'm getting into some of the numbers here in terms of what year they've been in there for because they've been running this thing for years now back to i think it was 1997 come on yeah they separated from google's research lab in 2016 <clears throat> in 2017 
they launched self-driving rides with a backup human driver in Phoenix. We're talking about four years ago now, folks. This is going to be the point of this, all right? And I often joke with friends, self-driving cars, technology in general is accelerating faster than any of us can really wrap our head around because of the way exponential growth works. But I, you ever, you ever send somebody a text and Siri and autocorrect almost takes the word you wrote correctly and changes it to another word that makes no sense in the context of that sentence? And I'll say to my friends, we're supposed to have self-driving cars and they haven't even figured out simple speech patterns of automation within your phone yet. And you think about how infallible self-driving cars should attempt to be, and they're talking about they've solved 99%, and the 1% left is the tough one to do. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat, talking for us. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by eight points straight down, trading at 44 to 35. As we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every week. We get a wrap-up of the Forex market. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are we doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. We got some interesting things going on in the Forex market, that's for sure, this week. 
We sure do. We got a little bit of selling in this market uh, yesterday. We've had a couple accelerations to higher prices towards the end of the sessions, though. Um, but I was jumping around to some of these commodity markets, getting ready for your interview today, man. And yeah, I saw some interesting action. Um, can we start it off with the the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, man? Because this thing just continues. We, we've talked about it before sure. and always interesting when I check it out. And man, quite a move we had. Was that yesterday? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a continuation, really, from where we were back in March. But what are you looking at on this chart, man? Oh, I don't try and catch a falling knife with this one. That's all I can say. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you have it, the, the fact that that whole trade zone now, um, I mean, we've been talking about the Australian dollar being a bear now for the past like couple of months and how this yeah. is going to just keep on. Now, is this all to do, Teddy, pretty much with just how, you know, Australia is so locked down right now and how that's just going to weigh on that country? Is that basically and I know there's a lot going on right now in the world and the economy, mm -hmm. but is that one of the driving forces just that simple over there right now? Well, that's one of the definitely one of the biggest uh, for sure variables. But then there's also the fact that China is not importing any of their commodities. I mean, their okay. biggest their biggest outlet for their everything that they produce is China. You know, okay. so I mean, when that when you couple that with the fact that you're locking down, so even though China, even if, even if China wanted to start buying stuff in the lockdown, they're not going to even be able to it's a ship it out, anyway. produce yeah. it. It's a huge problem. It's a mess, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. and then you have New Zealand, which yeah. now they've gone into lockdown. So now it's interesting. You wanted to start with this zone. So my my whole thing of all the currencies, and I've been saying this now. You everyone can look back on the past couple of Wednesdays sure. for sure. Australian dollar is pretty much a bear versus all currencies right now. Just it is, yeah. you know. So, and especially like with the dollar, and like for instance, like the pound Australian Australian dollar too, that's accelerating to new highs today as we speak, you know. So that just tells nice. you how Look at that much. Chart. Wow. Yeah. Right. I mean, and now that's now this is where like. The margins are expensive in FX. Like, there's a lot of opportunities with these cross rates with the Australian dollar. But, like, for instance, um, like I have a pound Australian dollar position on. The margins are much higher on that because the pound is a much higher margin contract to begin okay. with. Okay. And then when you throw Great in this volatility, right? people got to be careful if they start looking at this at these trends and opportunities. Like. Pick your spots and get ready for a long trade because you don't want to put it, be putting money up at risk like this on some sort of just like a day quick little move, okay. a little swing trade. You know, that's it's very important. Know. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, coupled with the New Zealand dollar now being under pressure, I mean, yesterday the dollar really had an accelerated rally that I think was coupled by the fact that you had currencies like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar that fell out of bed no matter what. They yeah, were actually dragging moves, the market. Man. You know, because yeah. see now we have the divergence because if you if you look at um, certain other markets, they're not having that sign of strength. You know, like for instance, the euro is banging new lows. Okay, the Australian dollar is banging new lows. Now the New Zealand dollar is kind of neutral, but it's riding new lows right now. Okay, but if you look at the Japanese yen, the U.S. dollar yen, they're coming yes. off a higher move low. So there's remember we've been talking about divergence. So we have a, a U.S. dollar yen bull going on that that's already in place, you know, and that's a whole different dynamic as far as why that's a bull there versus where Australia. This is a fundamental thing right off the bat. Yeah. Anyone that's looking at technicals, I'm sorry, um, everything is oversold that market. So you can throw every indicator, stochastic, RSI, and whatever you, MACD. <laughs> yeah. You, it's right? a free I mean, fall. Sure. It, it's a free fall. You know. So now you have to wait and see how things start to pan out. If you're not in this, in those trends, I would say use caution, stay away. There's plenty of opportunity elsewhere. You know, there's other markets swinging. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah, so. it's kind of like if an equity goes bananas through the roof, right, from 20 to 200, it might be mm -hmm. a great, great equity, but how do you exactly buy that on anything technical? That's just kind of where my head goes, kind of a similar attitude, sure. right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, but um, but yeah, but the in interesting thing too is when you look at the dollar rally right now, the, the 30 years coming off a lower move low, a high. So if they continue, like we have big numbers coming out um, tomorrow. You know, once again, the unemployment number is really big. Are we going to have a lower claims again? I don't know. I don't know. That's going to be, a, you know, no matter what, a big deal. You know, so I mean, the economic numbers seem to be holding the interest rates in place. We're not getting a rally. You know, so and I think that if they start to fall apart, that's going to definitely give, give more strength to the dollar once again, you know, and especially with gold being kind of neutral right now. You know, it's coming off some lows, but long term, I'm sure it's very bullish. But right now, intermediate term with gold, it's gold. It's very shaky, you know. So. Yeah. 
no definitely i mean we're back to basically the same price that we were at um 13 months ago back in july of 2020 yeah mm -hmm. now i'd be careful with the us dollar canada right now that's a that's a very very tricky trade i think that you really need to wait for a breakout i think that the end of the upside correction is or that the upside correction is over and it's more okay. of a neutral to lower that's from my personal point of view um okay. but still i'm looking for a confirmed breakout to the downside with newer move lows to to really lock that mindset in um because uh, right now with dollar strength going on the way it is we could see a pop in that you know and test those highs again you know what i don't see sure. even if we even if we run up to there i don't see a long term trend of strength for the us dollar with the canada you know i see it mostly with the aussie especially with the right now you know the new zealand Eh, a little iffy, you know, so and I would be careful with the pound right now. The pound is coming off of, you know, the US dollar pound is coming off a higher move low, but it's a very neutral trade because the pound is strong versus most currencies. So there's a lot of that's where this divergence comes into you. When you have that kind of thing that the, especially the big currencies, they can only trend so much one way or another against each other because of the relationship to these other currencies. If that I know it's if that makes any sense it should oh it does you know? listen i love yeah. i know there's you know. so many relationships which is what makes it so cool i think man right in terms of it's right. not just uh about earnings and revenue in terms of you have the and that's i mean that's i had not looked at um what was it the the pound aussie dollar pound the US, one that you just yeah. had me i mean that's just right. been it and you know um quite an like, do you know why obviously. i like that trade because i'm bearish the aussie versus pretty much every currency i picked yep. the pound because the pound is bullish versus most strong currencies even the dollar period right now so it's very neutral as far as being what's your underlying currency against it there's a lot of things that can happen with the u.s dollar the pound not so much, you know. Cool. So yeah. you put those two trends together, negative Aussie, very neutral pound, but pound strong versus all the other currencies that the Aussie is weak against, that gives you a, a really good odd situation with that kind of a trade, you know. But the margins are higher because you're talking about any pound cross rate is more expensive. And where are you looking on the upside on that pound Aussie dollar? I mean, that thing was all the way up to above two uh, at the depths of COVID. Where, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, are you looking at maybe to sure. move to the, it's been quite a run already from 175 to 190 this year, but where would you put your kind of upper boundary you're looking for on that? Right now, I would say for your pound Aussie dollar that you should be looking at somewhere around a dollar. 91 half something like that okay. to 90 to a dollar 92 like i think that this is i don't see it shooting up there in the next week or so but i can see sure. it trending and swing trading that way up for the next week and a half or so and we didn't get to crude but how are you on crude you still a bull man i'm a bull i'm a bull Perfect. and by the way short-term sell signal in ethereum we should correct down to about 2500 and then get a bounce back up i like it a little crypto as well <laughs> teddy man thanks so much right. we'll talk to you next week have Take a great care, one man Tommy. Thanks, Daddy. Learning your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! 
Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets catching a little bit of a bid. S&Ps, you're talking about a 10-point pop we just got from the open at 44.30. We're trading at 44.39. Those tech stocks back in the green, above 15,000 on the NASDAQ 100. You got the Dow off 78 points. The Russell continuing to lag off about 7 points. Gold contract back to 17.88. And we have crude right now trading at 66.86. And folks, tomorrow... It's going to be a great day at TFNN. we got our man Larry Pesamento. He's hosting his live trading webinar. If you haven't been to one, folks, I encourage you to attend. It's $295, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. It's a five-hour session. With that, you get a month of his Fibonacci 24-7 trading service. Now, if you're already a member of that Fibonacci 24-7 trading service, you can sign up for Larry's webinar for $295, and your next monthly payment is skipped as a result of that. So you gain that free month as well. Larry's going to walk you through his methodology as he breaks down the live trades that he'll be doing from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. in there. Uh, it's a great webinar, folks. He's done this before. We're going to have attendees. If you attended in March, you get to gain access to this for free. We also have a bunch of attendees that have signed up for this webinar, so it should be a good turnout of attendees in that chat room in there, bouncing questions off Larry throughout the day. Um, it should be a great event, folks. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., I encourage you to sign up today. Get ready for it. Fibonacci 24-7 is included, as I said, and that'll be a five-hour session tomorrow from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, as we wrap up the program, some of the numbers that were out as well as we talked about lows, we talked about target. Uh, jumping down the line, you have Viacom trading higher, I wanted to get to, as they get an upgrade from Wells Fargo. Let's see if they've held on to some of those gains. There you go, up 4.2% strong acceleration for Viacom. You also had Tilray, one of the cannabis producers, trading higher, 8.1%. Let's see how they're doing. How about a deal, $166 million in convertible debt of U.S. producer Med Med. MedMen Enterprises. Uh, Canadian producers cannot directly own a U.S.-based marijuana business, but Tilray could be poised to benefit from the deal if and when the U.S. laws change. T-L-R-Y is their symbol. Given most of it back, though, these cannabis stocks, man, they have been getting pummeled. Canopy down 2.3% as well. Stay tuned, folks. We got a market back in positive territory. That didn't last long. We're going to have a replay next hour because Basil's out today, but we got fast market at 11. Larry's at noon, folks, and don't forget about his webinar on the front page of TFNN.com. Thanks for starting your day with me. We'll be right back. Building wealth.